Typical stay-at-home moms work about 97 hours a week. Guys, the biggest part of parenting is taking care of ourselves because when we take care of us, we're better parents for our kids. And obviously we want to be mentally and physically there to be able to be the best we can for not only our kids, but also our husbands. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So if you're a stay-at-home mom or if you're a mom of any kids, you're just a mom, you are going to love this video because I think that we all struggle with needing to find more time in our lives, but feeling like we never have time. So let's jump right into the video today and start taking care of you better. If you want to learn how to take care of you better, feel on top of your game, and all other motherhood related stuff, be sure to start by subscribing to my channel and clicking the bell so you don't miss anything. Step one, start the day right. So this is a really important step because when you wake up from bed, obviously things start running through our minds. Maybe even you woke up in the night and things were running through your mind because as stay at home moms, we have so much going on. We have to not only maintain the house, but also teach our kids, get them dressed, take care of their basic needs, and also provide fun activities. There's so much involved with being a stay-at-home mom, and it's really important to start your day right when you wake up, get your thoughts in the right place, and not let negativity take over. Be positive about each day, and one thing that really helps me is making a good cup of tea, so I'm gonna go do that now. Alright guys, I'm back with my tea and that always makes me feel so on top of my game, whether it's tea or coffee, whatever you drink, get a cup of that in the morning and take five minutes for yourself. Mm. It makes your day so much better. A little backstory, if you're new to my channel, I have a son, his name is Reed and he's three years old. So right now he's pretty easily entertained by things like puzzles, play-doh, books, all kinds of different stuff. The night before you go to bed, set out a couple things for the kids to play with and get in a routine of letting them know that they are going to do that when they wake up. They're going to sit down maybe at the table or on the sofa and they're going to entertain themselves for five or ten minutes while you make your tea, maybe do a devotional and just take care of you. Start the day right by taking care of you and your whole day will have a way better outlook. Guys, stay tuned for the end because I have a bonus tip that you're not going to want to miss. Step two is here, and I know maybe you're the same way, but when I wake up, I get very frazzled by seeing stuff all over the house. Clutter everywhere, piles of laundry, dishes. I can't stand the clutter. The one thing I do to solve this problem is I delegate. And thankfully, I'm so blessed to have a husband who is so good at just pitching in and doing things for me whenever he is home. But of course he has a nine to five job, so he is pretty busy uh, with that. So in the day, I'd like to get things done so we have more time at night together. Well, there's nothing wrong with involving your kids and letting them have a part of taking care of the house because that's teaching them wonderful qualities for one day when they get married and they will make sure to pitch in and take care of their house one day as well. So what I do with Reed is I get some little cleaning supplies, even a little squirt bottle with even water and just let him go around and, and kind of help like dust, do stuff like that. He loves to help with the dishes, have them clean up toys and just pitch in any way that you see fit at an age appropriate level. Of course, if you have a 12, 14, 16 year old, they can do a lot more than a two year old. Get um, going on a schedule of after breakfast, we're going to do these jobs to feel better about the house and start our day right. One thing I like to do with this tip is putting on some fun background music because I know Reed loves music and when you put on something that's fun you can kind of dance as you're cleaning and it doesn't really seem like a chore and it's creating this idea in their minds that cleaning can be fun and that it's a good thing and a positive experience. Step three is exercise. I don't know about you, but I feel so much more on top of my game when I am exercising and I am guilty of not exercising enough. I should do this every day and I don't, but get out there if it's a nice day, take your kids to a park, go for a walk, or if it's rainy or messy out, jump onto YouTube and look up fun family workouts. There are tons and you could do it with your kids and involve them in getting healthy as well. And it is just a great thing to make sure you feel on top of your game, both mentally and physically. 
Hey guys, sorry to interrupt, but if you like what you see so far, why don't you consider subscribing to my channel? It's free and it's fun and you can join us and you won't miss out on any of my future uploads. For step four, we have a really good tip because I think that we're all guilty of this. Uh, maybe you're not. I'm sure there's people that are better at this than others. I know I am not good at it. It's one of my worse points because I love to please people. I'm a people pleaser. Although that can be a really great thing, with this, it's not. So you need to learn to say no. And it can be hard. I know as a stay-at-home mom, we feel like we can do everything. We have time and everyone knows we have time. We're just sitting at home, right? Doing nothing, just hanging out, enjoying our kids, right? No, not, not true. We are dealing with tantrums. We're making meals. We're cleaning. We're teaching. We're providing activities, like I said in the beginning. We're doing so much stuff. I just read this crazy study that really surprised me and I wanted to share it with you because I think that you'll find it pretty amazing since you're a stay-at-home mom like me. This is by Forbes, so it's a very reliable site, and it came out saying that typical stay-at-home moms work about 97 hours a week. I'm sure you know the average job is 40 hours a week, so we do over double that. It says spending 13.2 hours as a daycare teacher, 3.9 hours as a household CEO, 7.6 hours as a psychologist, 14.1 hours as a chef, 15.4 hours as a housekeeper, 6.6 .6 hours doing laundry, 9.5 hours as a PC or Mac operator, 10.7 hours as a facilities manager. What's your guess on how much a stay-at-home mom would be paid if it was a regular job? I was floored by this, guys, when I read it, but a typical stay-at-home mom would receive $115,432. Let that sink in. As you can see, we are very overworked and I think that uh, this is probably the best tip that you can just learn and pray even before you say yes to a decision. It's okay to say, I, I don't know right now, I'll get back to you. I often do that when somebody asks me to do something and I just need to make sure that mentally we can be there for that because I don't want to commit to something and be half-heartedly there or if, even worse, feeling like I don't want to be there. That's the worst when you commit to something and you go and then you're mad that you went. Like that's not fair to the people that are there. So I really feel like the most important thing you can do is put your family as priority. If that means just staying in and not doing anything with anyone that week, that's fine. People will understand. And honestly, you think you're gonna make them mad, but they will be totally fine. And more importantly, your family will be so happy that you put them first and you're on top of your game. Step five, this one is super obvious, but I feel like it's super important to tell you because I'm guilty of this and it is not good and I don't want you to have this problem too. That is to not work during nap time. If you have an infant, you could be looking at anywhere from, I don't, I don't even remember, it's been too far back, it's been three years, but I remember Reed slept all the time. He probably slept like nine hours of the day at first. So there's a lot of time and then it slowly fades out and you may have six hours and then down to three hours and maybe two hours and then no nap at all. So when your time is shrinking to so little and you're where I am now, where I have about two hours when Reed naps every afternoon, early afternoon. I'm so thankful he still naps and I try during that time to not do something that has to be done. Like I know it's easy to want to clean and we want to utilize the time to do like be productive, right? And that's such a great thing that you want to do that. But if you do the other steps earlier on where you've cleaned the house with the kids and you're taking care of those things, you won't have to worry as much when nap time comes. Use this time to do something you enjoy because all too often we're so busy with our kids that we don't take care of us. Don't feel guilty about that. All too often I think stay at home moms end up feeling guilty for taking time for themselves to do something that really makes them happy because they feel like their job is to put everything into their kids. And although that's true and our kids are our priority, we are still important. Don't work during that time. Don't clean. Don't worry about anything. Just sit down. If you're like me, I sit on the bed and I do what I enjoy. And what I enjoy is editing videos. That is so fun to me. And so I love to sit down and just work on my videos that I'm gonna be uploading on my YouTube channel like the one you're watching now. And honestly, don't even feel guilty if you have a show you like to watch or a movie, like go for it guys. Just take care of you because that is the little time in the day that you actually have. Obviously this whole video is how to make more time for yourself as a stay-at-home mom. You can't do the impossible. You can't 
literally, I mean, maybe you're blessed enough to have enough money to have a babysitter a certain amount of times a week. I know for me, I didn't really want to put Reed in daycare. My priority is to be with him and that means being with him every day. So there are only little moments of time that we can get. You have to use the moments that you have and obviously be more efficient in other areas so that during that short time that you have, you can relax and decompress and be the best you can for your kids. For the last tip, hopefully there's someone in your life that you're able to delegate some responsibility to and not only delegate, but I know with Rick, he just offers to help. And it's such a blessing to be able to know that when he's home from work, he'll take Reed and he'll have fun with him and provide Reed more opportunities and I can take a break. So what Rick actually came to me with one day, he said, Hey Paige, I got an idea. You stay here, relax, take a break, because I know you handle Reed all day, and I'll take care of the bedtime routine from now on, and I'll just make sure he gets up there and falls asleep. It's a perfect balance because Rick will get to spend time with Reed, who hasn't seen all day, and Reed gets to take a little breather from me, who he spent time with all day, and have a new rejuvenated sense of excitement with Dada and it's just, it's really works out perfectly. So utilize help that you have and take advantage of that. For instance, guys, right now it's Saturday and Rick has Reed out in the other room playing with him while I can do this. I enjoy filming videos. This is another hobby, just like editing. I love filming. He has encouraged me in my hobby and it's really been a blessing. And don't forget to subscribe and like this video before you go. Thanks, guys.